bound to tell here, and it seems as if I've made a grave mistake. I got caught up in the excitement of being back here on YouTube, and I was fooled by an apparent honesty and respectfulness that I should have been able to spot. Thanks to those who helped me realize it, though none are more to blame than the Garretarian himself. Because the tone of my last video to you was so misinterpreted by most, including yourself, I find myself forced to adopt a much more combative and serious tone. Though this is also because I find what you're doing to be quite troubling now that I've had even just a day of review. Let me first say that you should try to understand what people are actually trying to say to you when they criticize you, Negaritarian, because you seem to be completely ignoring those actual criticisms laid against you and focus on insignificant details of our arguments and ignore the actual substance. The point of anybody bringing up the children in this case is for the actual fact that there are a lot of people in the world who will kick your ass or shoot you. For, call, for just calling everybody a nigger. And there are significant amounts of this in the world. Because as idealistic as we can be about wanting to end it, racism still exists, and it's still something that is very toxic and still hurts a lot of people. It will take more than just changing that word and going around and calling everybody a nigger to change any of that. And then you ask a single child, as if he is some exception to it, and he gives you the exact answer you're looking for, and then you claim that it's not indoctrination somehow. Yet anyone familiar with child psychology would know that your summation of how a child's mind works leaves a hell of a lot left to be desired, and it demonstrates a complete lack of understanding about the actual mind of a child. I mean, but didn't you pay a bunch of lip service to reason in your response to me? This doesn't excuse you from the rules of logic and being reasonable. You had told me and others multiple times that you view nigger to be the worst of words and how it's important to the idea of racism that you seem incapable of explaining this or demonstrating it to be at all true. You just keep stating the same thing over and over again without backing up your claims. You then immediately talk about how we should be derogatory towards fascists. Well, fuck you then. I'd rather not be derogatory towards anybody because my actual goal is the betterment of all people regardless of what they believe. You're abandoning your goal of wanting to improve the whole of humanity or as you refer to it, niggerity. Aren't Nazis, by your definition, since they are humans, also niggers and thus worthy of helping under the banner of niggeritarianism? Have you even considered the sociological, political, economic, and psychological influences that drives one to a certain ideology, especially one as toxic as fascism? This is where I have significant problems with what you're doing, and it's a shame I didn't realize this earlier. You're ignoring the content of many criticisms, as I said earlier, laid against you rather than responding to them legitimately. You focus on the skeptical heretic's use of the word Nazi when he recognizes this to be a less effective comparison and used a different word in its stead. You criticize his non-point and completely ignore the actual point he's making and go on to once again merely restate your position opposite his and expect that to be an argument. Sadly enough, that's not how reason works. You never addressed the point of my video as well in any way I could consider as fair, either in comment or in the video that you posted as a response to me. I asked you about imagery and the power of the metaphor employed, and your video never even addressed the topic of my video. You merely used it as a way to pretend as if I support and or agree with you, which I have stated many times over that I do not and that I am very skeptical of your claims. Your comment that pretended to answer my question was just a projection of your own beliefs into my words. You stated how the quote shows I reject the original definition of the word nigger. This, however, is quite the opposite of how I believe, and I clearly pointed that out in the video and in the description of that video, and in my comments, I believe. Without the actual definition of the word nigger, the metaphor falls apart into meaninglessness. The point was to get you to respond to someone using the term nigger to make an equivalence between two kinds of discrimination to shed light into an issue that most people don't seem to consider. It does not remove the word from its original context at all, merely compares that original context to another form of discrimination. As I said, without this, it loses all power. Nigger is a racist and vile word filled with hatred, and you don't just get to state that this is no longer the case and expect everyone to just go along with you because you have these noble intentions. I have complimented you on your civility and respect, but I now rescind these comments. You have merely adopted a respectful and civil tone, but you hardly conduct yourself according to these principles. Where is the logic or civility or respect in saying that Nazis should be discriminated against? 
Because that's what you're saying when you want all terms for fascists to be derogatory. You are supporting the discrimination of a certain sector of society because of your disagreements with them. You do realize that this is the same exact line of reasoning racists will use to justify their hatred of another race, right? So rather than trying to communicate with these people and convince them otherwise, you would much rather us just merely insult them. If one takes a look at history, one can see where, people, where racists can come up with their false justifications. The most successful and powerful people, especially in the modern era, have a tendency of being white. That's simply historical fact. Now, while there are a lot of people of other races who have been successful and powerful, this doesn't stop a misinterpretation of history where they don't understand why this happens to be the case. And that's something you use. You use the behavior of previous Nazis and previous fascists to base your current discrimination and obvious hatred for on. So obviously we can explain away these historical inaccuracies, but the point is that both you and the very racists you criticize are using these misunderstood facts about history to justify a hatred for a certain group of people, rather than treat them as the human beings they deserve to be treated as. If we view them as inferior and discriminate against them when possible, we can never reach them to convince them otherwise, if we shut ourselves off from them and respond to their hatred with hatred of our own. And this reminds me a lot of something John Stuart Mills, a philosopher, an English philosopher, uh, I can't remember from when, uh, but not too long ago, uh, wrote about in his essay of the liberty of thought and discussion, which I have linked in the description bar for some interesting, related, uh, interesting reading related to many of my criticisms of you and a lot of what I believe because I tend to agree with a lot of what Mills wrote. What you're attempting to do here is silence racists and silence fascists and other people you disagree with, however justly so. Because I do indeed disagree with racism, Nazism, fascism, and all such things. This is ineffective, however. What you accomplish by merely changing the terminology around and forcing silence upon others by doing this is to push these toxic ideologies further underground to make their influences far more insidious and difficult to uproot. While people do not go around being openly racist anymore, Racists still have many ways of communicating their racism and do so quite frequently. All one has to do is spend a day watching Fox News or likely any other source of cable news, and one can spot many racist references without the word nigger being mentioned once. And one can see the intense harm that this causes even when your word is never, ever mentioned. So what does your ideology actually do to combat against the racism that underlies these words? You claim that we need an ideology that puts humans first and all of that, but as the skeptical heretic pointed out, there exists the means to do this without inventing new definitions or new philosophies. Does the word humanitarian ring a bell? Humanist? There are many derivatives already of the word human that fit what your goal is. The concept of nigger rights already exists as the concept of human rights. By you saying nigger rights, you're enforcing the racist definition, as the skeptical heretic said, because you can't just say, I mean human when I say nigger, and expect people to interpret this the same way. You never even addressed this, which I view to be a, pretty much the most significant point that the skeptical heretic was making, or at least one of his significant points. It seems to me as if you're just trying to take the lead on a movement when you hardly deserve such a position of leadership. So I'll ask you once more, and this is something that you seem to consistently dodge. How exactly does this change in a definition actually accomplish something? If you have to respond to something in my video, nothing in the video is as important as that question. It seems to me that you're actually quite counterproductive with your methods, though. It seems to me that it would be reasonable if your goal is to help people that you wouldn't go around shoving an incredibly painful word in their face and labeling their negative reaction to your insulting, disrespectful, and incredibly rude behavior as nothing more than agoraphobia. You can't just ignore these emotional reactions if your goal is the betterment of all humanity. There appears to be a lot of hypocrisy between your goal and your methods. You claim you're attempting to heal the wounds that this word has caused, but you seem to only be poking your finger into these wounds and telling people to shut the fuck up when they tell you to get the finger out of their fucking wound. Again, your goal of bettering humanity is great and noble, but your method makes no sense and is counterproductive, at least in the way you've been arguing about it. Changing a word doesn't affect the underlying emotions whatsoever, no matter how much you would like us to focus on it, because the people who would agree with your definition, by, by that very nature, the fact that they would agree with your definition, shows that they are already not racists. 
Definitions are born out of our collective experiences, however, not out of your psyche, so you do not get to just merely say that things are different. You have to actually argue for that. And you have to show how you're legitimately counteracting racism instead of just a solitary word because you're accomplishing literally nothing by doing this. And by the way, phobias, and you use this term negarophobia so unjustly, are legitimate anxiety disorders. And as someone with several quite intense phobias, there are a few situations that I will entirely avoid, even if it causes me harm in some other way. And if stuck in these situations, I will suffer extreme and rather intense anxiety attacks to the point of complete mental shutdown and acting nothing more than an, and acting is nothing more than a, a base animal guided by fear alone. And I find the word, I find the use of the word phobia to merely mean a dislike or distaste of something, as is the case with how people use homophobia and how you use negarophobia, offensive, incorrect, and downright insulting to those of us who experience the most paralyzing of fears when faced with specific circumstances. And I'd very much appreciate it that if you decide to be respectful towards other people, that you would stop insulting so many of us. People have very strong emotional reactions to being called a nigger, regardless of how you subjectively define it. You can't just label this with a slightly clever word and then ignore these emotional reactions. Because of your consistent insistence on calling everybody a nigger regardless of how they feel on the matter, I feel as if you're causing more harm than good regardless of your actual intentions. In closing, I ask that my tone no longer be misinterpreted like it uh, was by practically everyone in my previous video, and a lot of that is my fault for my own lack of clarity. To accomplish this, I would directly state that I am not attempting to be a jackass toward you in any way. If you have noticed, I have kept all personal insults or comments of your character or that nature or anything like that um, out of my argument. The serious tone is nothing more than that, a serious tone. I apologize if I accidentally misled you to believe that I agree with you on anything more than our shared noble goal of the betterment of humanity. I have adopted this more serious and cold tone in order to better communicate this aspect of how I feel on the issue. If you feel as if you've actually addressed any of my points in previous videos, please point me to them. I simply don't have the time to review 881 videos, or probably there's likely might be more by the time this video actually gets uploaded at this time in my life, so I can't check out your previous responses to similar criticisms if there were any. I'm still open to discussion with you, and I always will be. I just find myself in need of a different manner of discussion on this subject, and I apologize for jumping headfirst into this discussion without doing my proper research beforehand so I could know the proper tone to take from the get-go. I got carried away with the excitement of being back here on YouTube and making videos again, and with the fact that we had a pleasant conversation, conversation in the comment section of Federalist Films' video. I won't make the same mistake again, and I invite the same level of harsh criticism laid against me. We can completely disagree on philosophy and argue aggressively, actively, and forcefully without actually being dicks to each other.